Hello everyone. The following video will demonstrate how to analyze and design a multi-span beam with Safi Concrete. This example will show how to use the automated design tool to determine the required rebar sizes and quantities. In this example, we will design a statically indeterminate beam on three spans. To do this, we will build the grid according to the span dimensions. In Safi, the recommended gravity axis is the y-axis. Therefore, the orientation of the grid will be in the XC plane. The Y axis corresponds to the gravity axis. As the orientation of the plane has been set, we can now edit the X axis lines. We will retain only the first four lines with a spacing of 10,000 millimeters or 10 meters between the lines A and B, 15,000 millimeters or 15 meters between the line B and C, and 10,000 millimeters or 10 meters between the lines C and D. In the Y direction, since it is a single and linear element, we only need to keep one grid line. Once the grid is in place, it is possible to build the model with joints and members. To do this, we need to activate the Add Member command and select the entire grid. We could also create the joints and members separately. The next step would be to determine the support condition for each joint of the model. The A1 joint will be retained in directions X, Y, and Z and retained in rotation about the X and Y axis, but free in rotation according to the Z axis. The subsequent joints B1, C1, and D1 are retained only in the Y and Z directions and free of rotation in all directions. Because we want to design the three spans continuously, we will assign them as physical members. Physical members will sync the analysis results and design multiple spans as one single element. In this case, the option allows to design the beams in a positive moment zones between the supports and the negative moment zones near the supports. This will create the opportunity to define the properties of our sections. In this instance, you may notice that the section is still not determined, so we will set up a non-standard section. We will select a 40 MPA concrete. When a section has been assigned to a member, we can see the corresponding shapes displayed on the members. We will have a flange width of 1200 millimeters, a total height of 1500 millimeter section, a flange thickness of 250 millimeters, and a web thickness of 350 millimeters. The fillet radius, in this case, can be left blank. Once the section is created, it will be possible to assign it to the selected members. We now see that the section shape is displayed in the window. Subsequently, it is possible to see that the section profiles appear in the center of each cord. Now we will determine the loading conditions for this example. First, we need to create our different basic loads and assign names for them. For this example, we will use a dead load and a live load. We will then create the different load combinations with the help of Wizard. In this example, we will only analyze the system according to the ultimate limit states. The service loading cases can be removed. The load combinations will be generated according to the CNBC 2010. The wizard has created two load combinations. The first is 1.4 for the dead load, the second is 1.25 for the dead load, and 1.5 for the live load. We will also consider the self weight of the beams. To do so, we will go into the self weight menu, select the desired basic load, and define a minus one ratio in the y-axis, which is the gravity axis. We can now see the arrow pointing downwards representing the weight of the beam. We will also put a distributed live load over the length of the system. We will right click and open the distributed load menu and set a minus 30 kilonewton per meter load. We will now have created our different loading conditions for this example. Once the loads are applied and the load combinations have been defined, it will be possible to launch the analysis. 
In the Analysis menu, we will select the Static Linear Analysis. When the analysis is completed, we can visualize the internal member forces. If we look at the shear on the y-axis, we have the efforts on the three different spans, reaching its maximum near the supports. We can also observe the positive and negative maximum moments on the physical member. We will now use the automated design tool of Safi Concrete. To do so, we will select the physical member that we created earlier, enter the Member Attributes menu, and go into the Concrete tab. In the Longitudinal Bars menu for beams, we can observe the disposition of reinforcement in the beam. For now, we still do not have reinforcement in this beam. It is possible to create a beam design group here. Design groups will allow us to give the information needed to enable the automation of the design along a regular or physical member. We will name this beam design group 25M10M. The default longitudinal reinforcement bar sizes are 25M and 10M bars for stirrups. Now that the design group has been created, it can be assigned to the selected members. Once this is done, we can relaunch an analysis, this time selecting the Design Reinforce Concrete mode. It is also important to note that the user can manually edit the disposition and quantity of reinforcement bars in any section of the beam because of the physical member. Once the analysis is completed, we can go look at the rebar disposition within the physical member. We can now see that there are longitudinal reinforcement bars and stirrups in the multiple sections of the system. We can also see and edit the layout of longitudinal reinforcement bars. Reinforcement bars can be seen in the upper ranks of the section in reaction to the negative moments caused by the vertical supports. We can also observe the rebar layout plans on a 2D view in the corner you can also browse a selection of different cross sections. There is another interesting option to fully automate the design of the rebar. It is possible to let the software choose the optimal rebar design. To do this, we create a new design group and select the Auto for the longitudinal reinforcement bars. We attribute this design group to the physical member and launch a new analysis. We can now see the difference with the previous model. We can note that there are now two 35M bars in the lower section. We can also look at the ultimate limit states based on the different load combinations. We see that the reinforced concrete beams resist along its length to 93% of its maximum capacity. We can also see its envelope of internal forces. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos and information, please visit our website at www.safi.com.